doesn't work and it's incompatible with, you know, whatever else. And this documentation's no good. And um, in my position, I get a lot of funny emails like, Dries should really do this. Drupal needs to be able to. Uh, and, you know, um, and anytime you get somebody telling you that, that you should do this and that Drupal should do that, and especially when it's like, when Dries should do that. So people are experiencing privilege rate. And um, so, right, here we are. My friend was doing me a favor and I was having a tantrum. The, the, the internet, right, and all of our open source projects, they're, they're kind of wonders of the modern world. These are millions of hours of work. The miracles of the human intellect, okay? And we all end up acting like this guy. <laughs> This is me. <laughs> I need my internet. Why is it Drupal 8 released yet? <laughs> privilege rate, right? And instead of just, in open source, we have this amazing, amazing solution to this problem, which is this hashtag. Do something about it, yeah. right? So in New Zealand, the bandwidth was fine. They had some caps on it. I gave them some extra money. Everybody was happy. I got my job done, right? So everything is amazing. Just do something about it. That is our superpower. We have the freedom to use this stuff for whatever we want, for as long as we want. And nobody can take it away from us, right? And we have the freedom to know exactly how it works and to mitigate risk and to convince other people that it's perfectly safe and the right stuff to use. And we can make it the perfect tool that we need to do our job. And we can build a business using that tool. We can pass those changes on. We can help other people with whatever we make. The four freedoms that define open source let us do something <laughs> about our problems, and that's amazing, okay? So, when you're dealing with things that don't work in open source, be helpful. <laughs> be pragmatic if you can fix the problem, or if you can describe the problem. If you can file a bug report that makes the problem reproducible for other people, you're already contributing, right? You're already making a difference. Say thank you, be nice to people, right? Because it is millions of hours of work by our friends and colleagues over the last in, you know, in Drupal's case over the last 13 years, right? Submit pull requests, write patches, do all that stuff. As a last resort, <laughs> buying me a beer helps the overall emotional balance of the universe. <laughs> I swear that doing something about it in that way really, really makes a difference. So please remember this as you're going through your open source day. I unplugged an HDMI cable from my Mac, it crashed, so. <laughs> but that's not your problem. <gasps> it's still on. Okay, that's progress. Now. Do we go to the other video now? No. No. After the next break. Okay. Heavy. 
Yeah, that's the big boy. I thing know. Is <laughs> what did I put it? Oh, yes. <laughs> this screen table. Everybody close you your see. eyes. <laughs> A, B, C, one, two, three. There we go. The clicker still works. So, as I was saying before, uh, early on in this presentation, none of these open source events that we do would have free beer and nice catering and nice projectors and all this stuff if it weren't for our sponsors. So please, a big round of applause for True, Planbox, and my employer, Acquia. Thank you very much. <laughs> Given that we don't have many comedy numbers left, all right, I think we're over the halfway point at this point. We've done modules, we've done education, I got it now, <laughs> commerce, and tools and apps. We're going to get into our last six categories, starting now. Oh, okay. Not now. <laughs> because before we continue, apparently, <laughs> I, I don't think so. Oh, no. Hey, so. <laughs> I was invited to do the keynote at Drupal South, <laughs> and my friend. <laughs> all right, loud applause. I'll <laughs> oh, forget about this. One. <coughs> no, okay. No, it's been a long this is not the slide you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Contribution. This is a category for a person, people, or organization who has made a difference, contributed to the Drupal community as a whole. So, this might be someone writing great code, this might be somebody organizing an event, this might be like doing media production, this might be working on Drupal Core. Has somebody or an organization made a difference in Drupal by contributing? This is what we're talking about here, right? No, I think that that's kind of cool that we, like right after my thing, that it's the <laughs> contribution time. That, yeah, it's all, we, <laughs> plan, we planned all of this. <laughs> so, Ha-ha! Beer. Ha-ha! <laughs> Nancy Beers is one of my personal favorite Drupalists in the world. Thank you. Nancy had a gigantic starring role in my Drupal opera production in Prague. Who saw that? Oh, <laughs> my people. Awesome. So thanks again for that because that was superb. Um, Nancy has been a newcomer. You're not a newcomer anymore. And you're getting into more development and you co-organized DrupalCon social events and you co-organized the Drupal training day right before DrupalCon. Thank you for all of that. Nancy Beers. <laughs> Drupal for Gemeinten by Easy Company was nominated in the contribution category because it is a distribution developed specifically for Dutch municipalities. And the DVG distro is built on around a um, tasks model and um, it's designed to put easy and efficient online services front and center for the users and for the city administrations. Um, DVG has impl been implemented by two municipalities in the Netherlands already, and eight more are in the pipeline. This is pretty super awesome. And I didn't know about DVG before I was on the panel for this, um, but it's great because it follows the, um, there's this pattern um, really, uh, I mean, the very first one was open public, right, in the United States, government distro, and then there's a Canadian government Drupal distribution, there's AGOV in Australia, which was built by previous Next, and the next iteration of AGOV is called GovCMS, and you, I don't know if you knew it, but the Australian government has now adopted Drupal as the de facto web standard going forward. They have an, a, a distro called GovCMS, a uh, three-tier system of a hosted <coughs> offering and two different kinds of customized sites, and it's all based on Drupal, and it's super, super awesome. And, um, you know, Drupal plus government is a great combination. So, DVG sounds fantastic. 10 DVG sites in the pipeline. Thank you, Easy Company. <laughs> Clemens is not here either, is he? Clemens no. Togel. 
Um, I met him at my <coughs> very first DrupalCon in Saget in 2008. Eight. Who else was there? So that was my second week working at Acquia, or my <laughs> third week working at Acquia. That was kind of, that's amazing. Yeah, so who knows what department I started in at Acquia. So yeah, so I was on, I was on the engineering team when we only had one engineering team. So I started Acquia Engineering in 2008, and I made the great leap to marketing in 2011. <laughs> <laughs> because me and code, it was not really <laughs> super pretty. I'm good at testing and bug reports and a lot of other things, so I, I'm, I'm sure I made a difference. But Bart Feinstra is also not here, and he just he doesn't live that far from here. No. He's just here. <coughs> uh-uh. Zano is not in the house. Um, Bart was nominated because uh, he's been contributing uh, for a long time. He's one of the founding fathers of the Dutch Drupal Foundation, and he's been organizing a lot of the Drupal jams in the past. Thank you, Bart. Um, right. And the contribution winner is? This is the this is the this is the pile for in the <laughs> canal <laughs> afterwards. Right, cool. I think that he's very deserving. Now the next category is social. So the social category was about projects um, that facilitated internal and or external social networks and communities. The category includes projects that belong to the new work, um, integration with intranets, deploying with uh, you know wisdom of the crowd, crowdsourcing, ideation, all that stuff. That's all in this category. So the first nominee is a thing called Tour Makers by Clockwork. <laughs> Woo! So, uh, in the summer of 2015, the Tour de France will be passing through Utrecht. And um, is this really the world's biggest sporting event? Who wrote that? Yes, <laughs> Bigger than the Soccer World Cup? Yep. Wow. Yep. More viewers. Okay, all right. So, the world's <laughs> biggest sporting event will be passing through Utrecht, and they have to coordinate 2,500 volunteers around the start of the tour there. Um, and Clockwork Tour Makers has built this amazing website in Drupal for people to sign up as volunteers and to manage all their tasks and doing everything. And it was nominated because within three weeks of launch, a thousand people have already signed up on the website. Thank you, Clockwork. <laughs> this, 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 this page is much nicer than the thing I have to look at over here. Um, I've just got like black text on a white background. Um, Greenpeace Green Wire by Gold Gorilla was nominated because it has scalable architecture um, so that it can be performant and accessible for more than 100,000 active global users from 44 countries working in 70 languages, which is kind of amazing. So Greenpeace International uh, had an active volunteer base of more than 20,000 volunteers organized in about 400 different local regional groups. Um, but each local group, each national volunteer network had its own management and communication tools. Um, and, you know, honestly, knowing how organizations around the world works, you know, there were some that were working from a notebook. There were some that were an Excel spreadsheet. There were some that were, you know, on a website, a complete mess. But Greenpeace didn't have a real, true global volunteering database. And so instead of having all these spreadsheets and all these Google Docs and, and tracking, measuring data, you know, statistics, impossible. Gold Gorilla helped them make this incredibly large, highly complex site to then be able to coordinate their volunteers and make more of a difference in the world. Thank you, Gold Gorilla. <laughs> beep to beep. <laughs> I'm guessing that that's short for library, Yay. Be, be, right? Um, um, so this is a 
platform that provides librarians from all Dutch libraries a place to come together and exchange knowledge and ideas. Um, librarians are notoriously smart, keen people, really uh, excited about doing right by the world and, and, and making a difference for all of us. But, you know, until now, whatever good idea they had, its spread and use was limited by how far their reach was across their individual library unit, their city, whatever. So this platform um, has some amazing functionality about it, but essentially it provides this forum for all of these super smart people to come together and, and solve hard problems, which to me sounds an awful lot like what we do in open source and Drupal, right? So this is very close to my heart. It was nominated because the platform is fully responsive. It has unique features like Google Docs integration, which I think is amazing in the website. Um, you can share and track information via uh, access restricted timelines. You can make groups to create and maintain comprehensive profiles. And um, some of the functionality, some, some of the functionality has been given back to the community in the form of contrib modules. This was all built by a company called Merge. Thank you very much, Merge. <laughs> Amaseu, built by a company called 040Lab, I guess, 040Lab, something like that. So Amaseu is an enterprise that does uh, leadership, team building kind of journeys, and they have a very, very um, broad reaching concept that starts right when you show up through every part of all these journeys and all <coughs> these uh, exercises and, 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 and travel that they do together. Um, and so this was nominated because the um, experience was supposed to match, like be just as perfect and just as thought out in every detail as they think out their real world projects. Thank you, 040 Lab. <laughs> oh, and the winner is Creepy Screwwire. Awesome. <laughs> Come on, don't be shy. That was social, right? Yes, we actually have somebody from Greenpeace here. Wow, you get to stand up here. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not the shortest person in the room, congratulations. <laughs> There's a special prize from that, what's your name? Lily. Lily, Lily I'm Jan, nice to meet you. So who gets this? You. Little lady gets it, of course. Okay, I get it because I'm the client. <laughs> <laughs> you paid the bills, you get the prize. <laughs> yes. So, um, how do you possibly manage 100,000 volunteers who speak so many different languages? Well, we have different uh, websites for different countries. So each website has its specific uh, language that they speak. So it's, it's, it's hard, it's still it's hard. We, we, we still have some problems with translations and stuff, but Seth is helping. All right, <laughs> right, and, and so, so the vision is when you can start to get everybody in, in a central registry, you'll also be able to track and survey them, what they're interested in, what problems they care about, what their skill sets are, so that you can build um, much more targeted and, and effective campaigns, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's, a, it's a great vision, and it's such a, it's a massive, massive website. So well done you as well. Yes, thank you. Um, and uh, congratulations. Thank you so much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to put that up, right? Oh well. Yeah. <coughs> By the end, we'll get it right. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So the nominees in the architecture category have, um, you know, obviously the architecture is not so immediately apparent to a judge looking at a screenshot of a website, right? But um, these. Is that you? No. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we're talking about um, really super high traffic sites, <laughs> sites with really, really heavy, uh, large amounts of content, multi-headed, multi-site installations, uh, managing a portfolio of Drupal sites. So, so um, I was looking for uh, you know, interesting solutions to hard problems in this category. We actually have a, <coughs> a, a small announcement for this because there's an extra prize. Johan, where are you? Come over. Oxidon has an extra prize for the winner in this category. 
Wow. And uh, I think Jon can tell a little bit more about it. Yeah. So tell us why this category is so close to your heart. Um, because we are a managed hosting provider and infrastructure is uh, our heart. And that's where it starts. So and you're from Auxilium? Yes. I'm oh, and thank you for sponsoring tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we have a prize for it. It's uh, uh, a managed Drupal um, server uh, for one year. So um, wow, awesome! It's for okay. the winner. <laughs> All right, a, a managed Drupal server for a year goes to the winner of this category. Woohoo! You gotta yeah. hang out here for. We gotta get through all the okay. <laughs> um, So DOP is back in the running. The NCR. The the now wait, I'm just like hold on. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm looking for the explanation to all There's no, so I don't know what NCRV is, um, but to build this site. It's a broadcaster. It's a broadcaster. Oh, okay. All right, cool. So for this site, they developed a thing called the Program Information Page module, which allows quick and easy ways for new sub-sites to be realized within the larger corporate website. Um, the colors, background images, and layouts here um, can be controlled by the, by the central um, sites. So, so this is an interesting problem that, that, that I work in a marketing department and, and then I end up talking with marketers about Drupal solutions, um, even though it's not really my job. But so, so marketing departments around the world are con in large organizations are always concerned like, we need this campaign, we need this subsite, we need to promote this little thing, but they want to keep everything on brand and you have a legal department who wants to control language and, and a designer who has to, has to fit you know, her vision of everything. And so um, this idea that you can spin up subsites and subdomains and, and individual projects really, really quickly while having centralized brand control is, is a really important uh, real world business problem that, that um, you know, this is important that we solve this well in Drupal because people care about this. So thank you, DOP. This thing contains a hundred subsites within the main thing. Thank you, DOP. <laughs> BAM! By Synetic. BAM is an <laughs> extensive multi site platform, um, and it, BAM itself, so the client organization is, is able to roll out new sites in the CMA, in, in, within the, the, the larger CMS, through a wizard process that only takes eight steps. So, you know, this is taking the Drupal technology and making it really, really simple for our clients and our end users to use it. The BAM platform is like one big toolbox with several Drupal themes that can be uh, rolled and re-rolled on the fly. The platform is about a year and a half old and includes more than 70 websites. It was nominated because it's multi-site, it's got one Drupal core and database, and it's running more than 70 websites. Thank you, Synetic. <laughs> So another Belgian entrance built by Paddle, um, Can You, is a new content management platform for the Flemish government, and um, essentially it's a it's a solution together to 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 take the sort of fragmented landscape of uh, web solutions that they have and bring it onto a single web platform, and in this case it's a managed Drupal platform. And this was nominated because it's Drupal as a service, it's a complete package that includes hosting, websites, and support for a fixed price for the Flams Overheid. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> ha, and the nice pair, I love this. Um, we already know what it does, and the virtual, and the gamification, and the saving electricity, and, and gas, and it's super. It was nominated because it's a great example of how Drupal can be used as a presentation layer over large amounts of complex data and, and, and do it very, very well. Thank you again, Boris and Lehmann Grun. <laughs> and the winner is, and the winner is. Oh, I'm really happy. I'm really, I can say I'm really personally really happy about this one. The nice pair. Where do you want me to be? Well, I think <laughs> you're, yeah, I was going to say you, you, you can, you can, uh, you can come up here on me. It doesn't look too, you know. It's okay, right? <laughs>
Um, architect, architect. There you go. Thank you so much. So, and your extra special <laughs> yes. supplementary prize. Congratulations. Woohoo! Can I contact this? Will be in touch? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd like to know. Working with the, the government, environment ministry, or, or what it was, and these energy providers, how much of the concept did they come with, and how much were you able to contribute to, to making this incredibly you know, gamified interaction between the environment and energy needs and, and, and regular households? Um, well, that's a difficult question. First of all, to start with, I want to thank uh, Bert and Dot, um, because Dot personally built the system, the okay. website, and the client came to us like one and a half year ago um, to maintain the website okay. and to improve it. They did a kind of a test run with the website, uh, some interaction with external systems, and we kind of rebuilt the whole website, made it responsive, uh, rewrote all the like interaction with the with the external systems. Um, and about a month or two ago, they went like public with it, and it's now uh, running. Okay, yeah, and how's the uptake? Are people are people using it? It is. Um, Nathan, you you've started set the statistics today. We started a campaign, so yeah. now people are. I think it's two a minute this afternoon when we're registering. It's weak. Smart meter. We have smart meters. So Great, so fantastic. It's, uh, taking off. All right, mm. all right. So this is this is an uh. So so you, your your job was to was to take a really good implementation and then like optimize it, put on the final touches, get it to production. Exactly. So yeah, one of the examples is that the, the uh, interface that was showing like the en energy usage, it was showing an iframe, uh, and the content was built on an external system. Yes. Um, and we replaced the whole iframe. We made the web service interaction, uh, made all the graphs, and, and made sure that like the energy that you win with your solar system is also displayed in all these kind of inter interfaces. Fantastic. So a lot of JavaScript, a lot of JavaScript. magic going on in yeah. there. Awesome. A lot of it. Fantastic, thank you so much. It says break here. <laughs> hey, and technically, I think we're exactly on time, right? Yes, we are. Okay, yeah. who needs another cigarette? I do. <laughs> Just break. All right, okay. Last, ones. last break, and then we're gonna close this thing down. And there's toilets here as well. <laughs> <laughs>